What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. I can't believe I've had this channel this long and I haven't put out at least one episode uh, paying homage to David Robinson. <clears throat> Shame on me. So even after we do this video, I'm going to react to another video about David Robinson. I'm going to find one that's more highlight driven to really see him go to work with his skill set. I'm not going to get too long winded in me talking about him and his career and his, his accomplishments because I expect this video to do a lot of that heavy lifting. But I'll speak quickly, uh, uh, just some quick testament as to the player that David Robinson is. He has been one of these players, especially when it comes to bigs, that has been overlooked and not appropriately highlighted and given the respect that he deserves amongst the NBA fans and the general public. Uh, David Robinson, Willis Reed, Moses Malone, Patrick Ewing, a lot of these guys really don't get mentioned. Uh, David Robinson was seven foot one, about 250 pounds, came out of the, uh, the Navy, 1987. Drafted first over round, uh, first round, first overall pick by the San Antonio Spurs, as we all know. Played center for the Spurs, and he is very well decorated and has a long list of accomplishments that <clears throat> I feel the need to detail and highlight, especially for those that y'all didn't watch David Robinson play. You don't understand uh, what he meant to the league. You don't understand the kind of player that he was and how great this guy really was. Bear in mind, David Robinson was the last guy to have a quadruple double with 10 blocks, points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. And you better believe before this year is over, I'm going to react to his quadruple double game. Come on, man. David Robinson is a two-time champion, NBA Most Valuable Player, 10-time All-Star, four-time uh, All-NBA First Team. And the thing about the bigs is that only one center was getting the first team All-NBA uh, bid, the nod. <clears throat> it isn't like today where they just do three um, front court players. So we're talking about an era where there were a lot of great bigs. So I think a lot of bigs kind of get uh, kind of get left off uh, of these lists or they haven't made as many All-NBA first teams as they should have just because of how the, the voting was back then. And it was... Uh, more position based than this now. All right, two time NBA uh, All Second Team, four time Third Team, NBA Defensive Player of the Year, four times All NBA Defensive First Team, four times All NBA Defensive Second Team. All right, he won a uh, scoring championship in 1994, was the rebounding leader in 1991, blocks leader in 92, Rookie of the Year, All Rookie First Team. Made that 50th anniversary team. That's just a few of his accomplishments and accolades. On his career, David Robinson averaged a 21-point double-double, throw in three blocks, 21.1 points per game, 20,790 points, almost 10,500 total rebounds for 10.6 rebounds per game, and damn near 3,000 blocks uh, for three blocks per game on his career. The defense was absolutely astonishing. When David Robinson came into the league, his rookie year, rookie year, he came in beasting, folks. 24 points per game, damn near four blocks and 12 rebounds in his rookie year. In his third year, he averaged 23 points per game, four and a half blocks per game with 12 rebounds. David Robinson's prime wasn't necessarily as long as, you know, most other all-star players. You know, they have a 10, 11 year, really, really strong stretch there. Uh, Robinson had maybe six to seven ish strong years and he, he, he did deal with some injuries. It, it possibly could have been longer, but you got to remember he came out of the Navy after his enlistment. So he came in at the age of uh, 24, 25, basically his mid-20s. Um, so you have to take that into consideration. He was incredible. Starting from his rookie year, get this. 
24, 12, and 3. 25, 13. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna round. I'm gonna round his numbers up. Let me let me rewind it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna round his numbers. If he got 3.9, I'll give him four. All right, rookie year. 24, 12, and four blocks. That's blocks. I'm talking. 25, 13, and four. 23, 12, four and a half. 23, 12, three. 30, damn near 11, three. 29.8 points, but I'm giving him 30. 27, 11, and 3. 25, 12, and 3. Do I need to go on, folks? The dude was a solid perennial all-star superstar player for the first decade of his career. Exceptional team player. Exceptional skills. David Robinson could score from damn near anywhere on the floor. Really didn't take a lot of three-point shots back in the day, but there were some seasons where he got up a handful of threes, and he could take them, and he could make them. David Robinson, for his size, forget for his size, he was extremely agile. He was extremely quick off his feet. He was fast. He could score in the low post, in the paint. Great footwork, great post moves. Could finish off the glass or finish with power. Could shoot the mid-range shot from the outside post position and face up. Face up dribble between the legs, behind the back, all that stuff with his footwork. Could shoot the mid-range jumper with confidence, with ease. Could set other players up. I'm not saying he was this, this great point guard or anything, but you get what I'm saying. One year, he almost averaged five assists. This dude had legit point guard and shooting guard skills at seven foot one. And in my opinion, he is probably the best ball handler at the center position I've ever seen. Mix that with his athleticism. The things David Robinson could do. That's just the offensive end. Forget the fact how many positions he could switch on defense block shots, steal the ball. He averaged damn near two and a half steals one season. And f even if he didn't get the block or the steal, he would contest shots and force misses. The dude was incredible, man. Big shout out to David Robinson. I'm going to stop there. I could, I could go on. And uh, trust me, as a Laker fan, I couldn't stand the San Antonio Spurs. And while... When I really started becoming a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers, um, Robinson was probably starting the decline of his prime a little bit, but um, he was still a force to be reckoned with, especially when the Twin Towers came, him and Tim Duncan. All right, that's enough. Let's get into this video. When you think of the San Antonio Spurs before Tim Duncan arrived, who comes to mind? Well, it should be David Robinson. Throughout the 1990s, Robinson was the guy leading the way, carrying the Spurs to the playoffs and leaving his mark as one of the greatest big men of all time. However, on the other side of the spectrum, Robinson and the Spurs were on the receiving end of a lot of playoff disappointments. For years and years, they would constantly lose to Charles Barkley and the Suns, Carl Malone, John Stockton, and the Jazz, and of course, Hakeem Olajuwon and the Rockets. A series that we all remember today. The year when Robinson won the MVP, the Spurs finished with the best record in the entire league, and then they would get obliterated by Hakeem and the Rockets. Let, let me say yes, Hakeem used to put David Robinson in the torture chamber, bro. In fact, nowadays, that's probably what Robinson is most known for. Not his crazy numbers or his ridiculous talent, but his shortcomings. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the career of David Robinson. How good was he actually? Was he as good as the other greats of the 1990s, and why wasn't he able to find success before Tim Duncan got there? To start things off, Robinson was drafted as the first overall pick in 1987. The same draft class as other notable stars like Scottie Pippen, Kevin Johnson, and Reggie Miller. However, because Robinson was serving in the US Navy, he did not sign a contract with the Spurs right away. There were some negotiations back and forth from both sides regarding his contract. But eventually, after his service, 
Robinson would sign with the Spurs to a contract that nearly matched the highest paid players in the NBA. So there was an immense amount of pressure on the young Robinson right away, as the Spurs were near the bottom of the league before he got there. When he joined the team in 1989, he was 24 years old and made an immediate impact on the team. Robinson won Rookie of the Year in a landslide, averaging 24, 12, and 2 with nearly 4 blocks a game. That's insane for a rookie and he was already recognized as one of the best big men of the league. Arguably a top 3 center in the NBA, right behind Hakeem Olajuwon and Patrick Ewing. And that was as a rookie. He also made the All-NBA third team and second team All-Defense and he made the All-Star team. It was one of the greatest rookie seasons of all time and to cap it all off, he turned the entire Spurs franchise around. The team had one of the biggest turnarounds in NBA history going from winning 21 games in the previous season to 56 games and the second seed in the Western Conference. The roster saw some major changes so part of the credit has to go to his new teammates too, especially when the Spurs got Terry Cummings, a former All-Star and a huge part of their turnaround as well. In the 1990 playoffs, the Spurs would dominate the Denver Nuggets in the first round, sweeping the series as they had no answer for David Robinson. Unfortunately, they would fall in the second round to the Portland Trailblazers in seven games. The Blazers would go on to the NBA Finals where they would eventually lose to the Pistons. After a very successful rookie season under his belt, the future was looking bright for Robinson and the Spurs. They had a great group of young guys including Sean Elliott, Rod Strickland, and Willie Anderson. These four would become the core of the team for the next few years, with Robinson leading the charge. The rest of the league took notice as well and definitely paid attention to what Robinson was doing. Hakeem Elijah once said what surprised him most was how he was so quick. You can't blink or else he'll go right by you. Robert Parrish said, if he's having this type of year now, his first year out, the sky's the limit. Tom Chambers said that Robinson played at a Nike exhibition game and he was dominating guys like Charles Barkley and Moses Malone. Hubie Brown said, I think he's a surprise. Not that he isn't outstanding, but that he is a superstar. I think that people didn't realize how big and strong he was, and then the fact that he would block as many shots and rebound as much as he's rebounding. As you can tell, the Admiral took the entire league by storm, and was already recognized as one of the league's brightest young superstars. The expectations of Robinson and the Spurs were as high as ever. But unfortunately, the next few years were pretty stagnant. From 1991 to 1994, the Spurs would lose in the first round three out of the four times. Robinson himself was still really, really good as he continued to make All-NBA, All-Defensive teams, All-Star teams. Individually, he was a top three center in the league, arguably top two. But the roster surrounding him really wasn't working out. They had a pretty similar team for the first five years of his career and after a couple of coaching changes, Robinson was starting to get a little bit impatient. However, after hiring John Lucas, their new head coach in 1993, Robinson would have the best individual season of his NBA career. With Lucas wanting to run the offense more through Robinson, the Spurs offensive rating took a huge jump. They were previously hovering around 14th or 18th in offensive rating for a couple of years, but in the 1993-94 season, the Spurs would register the 4th best rating in the league. Question, if anybody knows the answer to this, they mentioned John Lucas. Is he related to the basketball player John Lucas III? Let me know. Robinson averaged a career-high 29.8 points a game and led the entire league in scoring. This was the year where he scored 71 points in the last game of the regular season, beating out Shaquille O'Neal for the scoring title. He also averaged a career high in assists with nearly 5 per game. While Robinson and the Spurs were set to enter the 1994 playoffs on a high note, it went very poorly. He had a terrible series by his standards, shooting an abysmal percentage and the Spurs would lose in the first round once again, in 4 games to the Utah Jazz. Carl Malone utterly destroyed him, making him look like a high schooler. Afterwards, despite Robinson's very successful season, coach John Lucas got fired and the Spurs went back to the drawing board. The following season would be the best one yet. 
In the 1994-95 season, the entire team wanted redemption. They finished with a 62-20 record, and up until that point, it was their best record in franchise history. Robinson was named the MVP to the delight of his teammates and the organization, but to the dismay of his biggest rival, Hakeem Olajuwon. The Spurs would have their best playoff run of the Robinson era reaching the Western Conference Finals. Unfortunately, the run would stop here. This time, it was Hakeem Olajuwon, hungry and prideful as he watched the commissioner hand the MVP trophy to Robinson. As his teammate said, that was a mistake as they handed him the trophy before the series started. Hakeem would play the best series of his entire career against the Spurs, averaging over 35 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 blocks. Oh, damn. On the other hand, Robinson, well, he didn't have a terrible series, but it was clear he was getting outplayed left and right by Hakeem. After losing in 6 games, Robinson took this loss harder than anyone else. He knew that him and Hakeem were two of the top centers in the league, and they would always be compared to each other in the media. Hakeem has always outplayed him before, but this time, Robinson was the reigning MVP and everyone thought this would be his year. It just wasn't, and once again, Robinson got sent home after an underwhelming series. So, what is it with Robinson's game that made him drop off during the playoffs? You could tell from looking at his numbers, his playoff stats see a drastic drop off from his regular season numbers. Is he simply not good enough? Is he getting outplayed? Yeah, that is true, and to be honest, part of it had to do with Robinson's approach to the game. He was very dominant in the regular season, but he was also a rather predictable player. He did not handle double teams as well as other bigs, and his offensive game sometimes looked very stagnant. Very predictable post moves, and he wasn't super adept at finishing with his right hand. That's why a lot of older, more experienced teams with more experienced big men like Hakeem or Karl Malone knew how to defend him to limit his effectiveness. Fast forward a bit, and before the 1996-97 season started, Robinson threw out his back, and then later on, he broke his foot. This caused him to miss all but six games of that season. Yep. Greg Popovich, who was previously the Spurs GM, decided that, you know, I'm going to coach this team by myself. And thus, he named himself the new head coach. And they... Yo, I, I, I never knew Pop was the GM at one point. ...lost a lot of games. But in hindsight, this whole disaster of a season was a blessing in disguise. The Spurs won only 20 games and was granted the number one pick of the 1997 NBA draft. The pick that they used to draft, yep, Tim Duncan. Mm -hmm. Almost immediately, Duncan would take over the team and become their best player. Robinson would become a two-time champion, once in 1999 and again in 2003. By this time, he was merely a role player, a great role player nonetheless, but the Spurs were moving in a different direction. And after 2003, Robinson would retire. So, how good was David Robinson actually? Well, he was pretty damn amazing, one of the best players of the 1990s, but he got overshadowed by others. Individually and statistically, his numbers were just as impressive as a guy like Hakeem or Patrick Ewing or Shaq. I would still put him as a top 10 or maybe top 8 center of all time. Another knock on him is his longevity. His prime was relatively short compared to other superstars as he only really had 6 or 7 seasons where he was a legit superstar. I guess that's partly because he entered the NBA at the age of 24, which is on the older side. Also, he was one of a few players who ever recorded a quadruple double. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Admiral. Where would you rank him among the best centers of all time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. There you have it, folks. David Robinson. Um, yeah, Hakeem Olajuwon was, you can argue, his arch nemesis, especially being in the same conference. Uh, especially during those times of his career where the expectations were at at their peak, at their highest, and more was expected from him. But Hakeem Olajuwon, like Hakeem did to many people, torched him, bro. But that that's also a testament to how great Hakeem Olajuwon was because David Robinson was very skilled in his own right. Just like Hakeem on both sides of the floor, David Robinson was doing it on both sides of the floor too. But I'd be the first to tell you, I, I without a doubt, I think Hakeem Olajuwon was the better player, the better center. I, I, I would never 
uh, saying anything other than that. Um, but not to take anything away from Dave Robinson, he was phenomenal, man. And, you know, I, I really wondered what his career would have been like, maybe a little bit different had he came in at an earlier age. But with him coming in at the age of 24 with such an immediate impact and one of the greatest rookie seasons ever, uh, he's definitely one of the, you know, he, he'd make that list of top, you know, NBA-ready rookies coming into the league. Um, and, and playing for the Navy all those years definitely helped. D-Rob, baby, D-Rob. Yeah, him and Tim Duncan were a beast together, man. That that twin tower lineup. Could you imagine if David Robinson was in his peak, at his peak in his prime, teamed up with Tim Duncan? Ooh, good God Almighty! But at the same time, I uh, when Shaq really got into his prime with the Lakers, like prime Shaq, Lakers Shaq, and David Robinson was still playing, I was watching Shaq just abuse him and Tim Duncan at the same time in the paint. Shaq was just a, a behemoth, dude, just a monster. <laughs> I had to throw it in there because as a Laker fan, boy, I used to love watching Shaq fling David Robinson around and in the paint. <laughs> Can't stand no San Antonio Spurs, man. They stopped our four-peat, our potential four-peat. Damn San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got to say about it. I'm going to wrap this up here and then I'm going to do uh, some more David Robinson content because it's a shame I'm just now getting to him, all right? Y'all let me know what you think about it. Are you a David Robinson fan? Are you a Spurs fan? Please share your opinions with me. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.